Greetings, Captains. My name's Alex, and I'm the Community Manager on Earthless. Today we'll be going through a complete run of our recent demo in under five minutes. Soft landings, and let's go. First things first, we'll need to pick our faction. There's only one available in the demo, the International Aeronautics Association, but there'll be more to come when we launch into early access next year. The IAA gives us access to three ship types, each with their own ship ability. For this run, we're going with the appropriately sci-fi named Clark Class Ship. The Clark adds five dagger missile launch cars into our hand when we use the ship ability, something that will be very useful when we find ourselves in trouble. Welcome to space, Captain. This is the star map, and it's how you'll traverse across the cosmos in your search for a new planet. Each node on the map is either an encounter, point of interest, salvage site, transmission, or, if we do make it to the end of the run, a boss encounter. Right, let's jump into some encounters so I can show you how combat works in Earthless. Combat takes place on a battle grid. In this first encounter, it's just us and a single enemy Lusk ship. Lusks are mysterious alien lifeforms that are immediately hostile to the human ships fleeing Earth. You can hover over enemies during a battle to learn more about them. In each battle, you'll need to navigate around enemies and obstacles using your available movement. Each time you move in Earthless, your ship will generate heat. If you hit your maximum heat level, your ship won't be able to move again until you use a card to vent heat or lose one heat level at the end of your turn. On top of managing your heat level, you'll also need to manage your available energy. Normally, you'll start a turn with 4 energy, which you spend to play cards from your hand. Cards can be weapons, like the missile launch we just used to eviscerate that poor defenseless meteor, or they can buff your ship's operations in some way, or debuff the enemy. In later encounters, you'll have to plan your strategy around environmental hazards like contamination. A silent killer that damages your ship's hull more and more the longer you stay in it. Enemies will become tougher too, with encounters introducing new enemy unit types such as Lusk Seekers, Vandals, and Overseers. At the end of each successful encounter, you'll be able to choose from different rewards. During your journey, you'll collect several different rewards, including cards that will elevate your deck to the next level, artifacts that add an effect to your cards when added in the crafting menu, and resources to craft different card recipes. You can enter the crafting menu from the star map to spend resources for new cards and to add artifacts to cards in your deck. Every three nodes, you'll also get the option to recycle a card from your deck in exchange for resources. This is a handy way to streamline your deck and keep it from getting bloated with unnecessary cards. Outside of encounter nodes, you'll also pass through points of interest. Points of interest pose difficult dilemmas that only you can solve as the captain of your ship. Be careful though, your decisions do matter and will set in motion future events and dilemmas. On top of this, your important crew members will all have opinions on the choices presented to you, and their relationship will improve or decrease depending on your actions. Keep following the advice of your gunnery officer for example, and you'll find your weapon systems boosted in battle. Ignore them though, and your weapons will decrease in efficiency. Another type of node you'll travel through are transmissions. Useful data is transmitted across space from other human ships, allowing you to upgrade your crew members. Each crew member fills an important role, and the bonuses available to them through transmission nodes can prove vital to the success of your mission. You can only choose once per transmission node though, so pick wisely. The final type of node you'll explore are salvage sites. Unfortunately, many human spacecraft have been lost in the search for a new home. These floating wrecks can be salvaged to repair your own ship's hull, or to find new parts, like artifact and card schematics. Salvage sites are one of the few ways to repair your ship after battle, so seek them out. If you make it to the end of a run in one piece, you'll come face to face with a deadly alien boss. Our demo has you facing off against the Spawn Herald Core, a gigantic Lusk organism armed with turrets and a fleet of alien spawn. Let's hope your ship and crew are ready for the battle ahead. Remember, humanity's continued survival rests on the shoulders of brave captains like you. We'll see you in 2024. Soft landings, Captain.